हेलो टुडे वी आर एक्चुअली डिस्कसिंग अबाउट थर्मल इक्विलिब्रियम सो व्हाट इज थर्मल इक्विलिब्रियम ए सिस्टम इज सेड टू बी स्टेट ऑफ थर्मोडायनेमिक इक्विलिब्रियम व्हेन इट्स स्टेट वेरिएबल्स रिमेन्स कांस्टेंट व्हाट आर द स्टेट वेरिएबल्स स्टेट वेरिएबल्स constant state variables means enthalpy h entropy s internal energy e gives free energy g So these are the criteria. So state variables constant, temperature constant, intensity properties constant, flow of mass constant, no water, chemical properties remain constant. These are the these are the criteria for thermal equilibrium. Now for <coughs> explaining the phenomenon of thermal equilibrium, zero law of thermodynamics. So, for explaining the phenomenon, natural phenomenon of thermal equilibrium, the law which is conceived in thermodynamics that is called zeroth law of thermodynamics. So, if warm and cool objects. 
objects are placed in thermal contact. Then the heat is flowed from warm object to cold object. When warm and cold objects are in thermal contact, all this heat flows from warm to cold object. That is a natural phenomenon. And this is the main reason for explaining this phenomenon. The zeroth law of thermodynamics is actually developed. So what is the statement of zeroth law of thermodynamics? If, if in case of three objects, we if we are taking three objects this is object number 1 this is object number 2 and this is object number 3 this is a thermometer you can see this is a thermometer and this is object number 1 
energy. Without consumption of energy is not possible. So number three, perpetual machine of first kind is not possible.
the energy is exhausted. It will need the source of energy, another source of energy to continue the process, continue for doing the work. So perpetual machine is not possible. A machine can't, can't work, cannot work indefinitely. The sources of energy is required, constant sources of energy is required. Because for performing work, the energy is exhausted. So what are the limitations of first law of thermodynamics? Why second law of thermodynamics? Actually first law of thermodynamics determine the conservation of energy. So it why what, what is the demerit or what is the limitation? So first law only the conservation of total energy but it says nothing about the direction of energy transfer and for that reason second law of thermodynamics is required. So first law says nothing about the direction of energy transfer. So we have discussed zeroth law that means it is it explains the thermal equilibrium First law, it explains the conservation, the total energy of the system and surrounding always conserved. Or total energy of the system is always conserved, is equal to the heat absorbed by the system, is equal to the work performed and total internal energy of the system. So from first law, we actually in the concept of another term, another th thermodynamic term that is called enthalpy, H. Exactly. 
Enthalpy is state function. So enthalpy is an extensive property. It is also state function. Independent of the path followed. It depends only on the initial state of the system and the final state of the system. So now change in enthalpy. Delta H and Delta E in case of 
Combines with one mole of gaseous oxygen to produce 
when one mole of substance is completely burned in excess of oxygen. Since combustion reaction are always exothermic reaction, so delta H is always negative for this case. So heat of combustion of methane gas is minus 890 per 2 kilojoule. So methane in presence of oxygen it forms carbon dioxide and water. And the, this is as this is exothermic reaction. So delta H is minus 890, 890 per 2 kilojoule. Next is enthalpy of neutralization. The term neutralization reminds us the acid gas reactions. So the enthalpy of neutralization is the change in heat content when one gram equivalent of the acid in direct dilute aqueous solution is neutralized by one gram equivalent of dilute aqueous solution of base. When one gram equivalent of acid is actually neutralized by the one gram equivalent of base that is called the enthalpy of and the heat produced for that reaction is called enthalpy of neutralization. One gram equivalent of nitric acid when it reacts with one gram equivalent of sodium hydroxide caustic soda to form sodium nitrate and water. This is the exothermic reaction and enthalpy of neutralization is minus 57 kilojoule. Surprisingly, it is found that when one gram equivalent of HCl reacts with one gram equivalent of caustic water to form potassium chloride and water, the enthalpy is minus 57 kilojoule. So these are two different, entirely different reactions, but the enthalpy of neutralization is same. Why? This thermochemical equation implies that heat of neutralization, delta H of all strong acids like HCl or HNO3, which are dissociated with H plus and OH minus I.
formation. Heat of formation means when a compound is formed from its elements in standard state. So enthalpy of formation of the compound is a change in heat content or enthalpy when one mole of the compound is formed from its element in their commonly occurring state. Like graphite, carbon. Carbon graphite reacts with hydrogen to form methane and enthalpy of formation is minus 74.8 so carbon in elemental state that is formed as graphite and hydrogen is present as gaseous state. So solid graphite reacts with hydrogen gas to form gaseous methane. So heat of formation is minus 74.8 kilojoule. The above reaction indicates that when one mole of methane gas is formed from its elements, carbon and hydrogen, 74.8 kilojoule of it is given how is exothermic reaction. Thus, enthalpy of methane is minus 74.8 kilojoule per mole. So, enthalpy of formation is related to stability.
water liquid water is converted to steam it is vaporization so what is the definition in that Exothermic process, endothermic process, as it is actually. 